Hey everybody, thank you so much for being here. My name is Dawson Cruz. It's such an honor to be here with all of you today. And let me tell you how all of you are so inspiring to me. And I am so honored and happy that I was invited and so thankful to One Young World and of course Kate and David for having me in such an amazing event. I believe that everyone is born with a special talent. Sometimes it can take a lifetime to develop that talent. You all have been born with fire in your minds and in your souls. You are so young and yet so talented. As a mother of two young children, I often wonder what kind of people my children will become. And honestly, if they will become half as amazing as all of you, I will be incredibly happy. Before I get to elephants, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from Friesland, the Netherlands. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect that. <laughs> There's some people from Holland <laughs> and Friesland. Um, I grew up there, famous for its cows, its Frisian horses, and of course, when it's cold, the lakes and the, and the, and the canals that freeze over for its speed skaters. My village was at the end of a dirt road, and the upbringing me and my younger sister had was an environmentally conscious one. We conserved water, we biked to school 24 kilometers each day, even if it was raining, and as you know in Holland it rains a lot. And we grew organic vegetables before that became a thing. Growing up in the country provided me with a lifelong love for animals and nature. I can remember, even as a little girl, I managed to donate to Greenpeace and a World Wildlife Fund with my own little donations, which weren't much. But knowing that I was trying to help in some way gave me a sense of accomplishment, and I was proud that I was contributing to protecting the environment and animals. I've always tried to help where I can, whether it be supporting environmental causes, animal charities, or Dance for Life, which, by the way, is a human charity that I've been working with since 2009. Dance for Life, as the name says, is all about dancing and educating young people all around the world to protect themselves against HIV and AIDS. And I love the work I do for them, not only because I meet to all young people around the world like today, and you know, they share amazing stories, but also because I see it's working through dance and music, and I love dancing. <laughs> My love for elephants started a couple of years ago over dinner one night in New York City with David Bonouvrier, my agent, and his fiance, Trish Goff. They couldn't stop talking about their trip to Kenya, Samburu. And they said, Dawson, you have to go. It will change your life forever. And it did. Shortly after, I found myself on a plane with my family to Kenya, to Samburu, to visit an organization called Save the Elephants, run by the legendary family called the Douglas Hamiltons. It was love at first sight. Not just with the elephants, but also with the work that the Douglas Hamiltons are doing there. The Douglas Hamiltons are truly one of the most ex extraordinary families I have ever met. They greeted me on my first visit as if we had been longtime friends. To me, it was like coming home. I got to meet the elephants. And let me tell you, if you've never met an elephant before in person, it's such a humbling experience. Aside from their size and their power, they have an incredible energy and appear as fascinated by us as we are by them. As amazing as my first trip to Samburu was, I was also shocked by some, by some pretty numbing facts. At the turn of the 20th century, it was estimated that there were a few million African elephants and around 100,000 Asian elephants left. Now, that number is put conservatively between 400 and 500,000 total on the planet. 
I also learned that 30,000 elephants are killed each year for their ivory. That is one every 15 minutes. That is one right now, during my talk. For me and for so many people, elephants are incredibly symbolic. They are remarkable, powerful, and noble creatures. Their size, their intelligence, and their families, and the ability to make emotional connections with people mean they represent the precarious relationship between us as people and the planet we live on. On my family trip to Samburu, one of the biggest joys was watching my four-year-old son watching the elephants for hours, silently, happily, and with so much interest. The animals were as hypnotic to him as they were to me. And anyone else who has ever had the opportunity to see an elephant in the wild where they belong. Needless to say, I immediately wanted to do something I wanted to do anything I could to raise awareness and money to the plight of elephants and to protect them. With this in mind, Trish, David, and I, along with George Preston and Drew Burton from you and Mr. Jones, David Jones's company, <laughs> started brainstorming to come up with a social media campaign which would rally the fashion industry, saving elephants. Researchers have long known that elephants have incredible memories and believe that their recall power is a big part of how they survive. Meanwhile, for generations, humans have tied knots to remember things. So it made sense that we would tie knots and never forget elephants. This is how Not On My Planet was born. For everyone to remember our campaign, we would tie knots in solidarity to remember the elephants and the cause of protecting them. Because of my profession, I'm in a pretty unique position to reach a wide audience. And so are many of my friends in the fashion industry. Not on my planet became our hashtag. And I was relentless as I asked practically everyone I met to join me in our campaign. The question was pretty simple. They had to tie a knot and post it on their social media channels the same day. I did the first post and soon a lot of the people I had asked participated as well. Our initial Not On My Planet campaign garnered 1.5 billion impressions and received a lot of media attention. But more importantly, we raised over $3 million 100% of which went to the Elephant Crisis Fund, which I will talk about later. <laughs> Despite the occasional success of campaigns like the Ice Bucket Challenge, it remains incredibly difficult to raise money in social media, especially for animal causes. So we decided to approach things differently. As we all know, Brands are constantly trying to attract new customers, and big, big luxury brands of the world are no different. However, young people today, your generation, are not necessarily drawn to luxury in the way that our parents were. Our Not On My Planet campaign offered brands the chance to be associated with a good cause and our influencer army, like top models, world famous designers, and legendary photographers, gives brands the opportunity to reach the millennial audience in a very natural way. Of all the companies that have rallied to our cause, including Loewe, Porter Magazine, and Ivory Ella, it has been Tiffany & Co., the iconic American luxury brand, whose contribution has been the most significant and whose involvement points to a new way for corporations and charities to come together for the benefit of all. Just last month, Tiffany launched an entire collection of elephant brooches, brooches and necklaces called Save the Wild. 
and everything, all the money they raised, went to the Elephant Crisis Fund. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Tiffany. I can also imagine that you're thinking, great, but what does it do for the elephants? Let me explain. The Elephant Crisis Fund is a joint initiative between Save the Elephant and a Wildlife Conservation Network in partnership with the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation. And again, 100% of the money donated goes straight to stopping trafficking and the demand of ivory. Right now, the Elephant Crisis Fund is operating in 31 countries, funding a total of 163 projects from 53 organizations and has deployed $12 million in the last four years. The great thing is, is that the Elephant Crisis Fund deploys 100% of all donations to the field and can do so within 24 hours when an emergency arises. Some of the things that they're currently doing is sending investigators to lawless casinos in the jungle of Laos, where ivory is openly on sale helping to secure the arrest and deportation of the U.S. of senior figures in the illegal wildlife trade, and funding ranger patrols, intelligent networks, and patrol aircrafts to fight poaching across the continent. Each of, here, each of us here, whether we realize it or not, are touched by the elephant crisis. Whether it be the elephant poaching in Africa, the trafficking across the world, or the demand for ivory in many countries, where ornaments fashioned from elephant tusks are still highly sought after items. Driving the killing is a complex international ivory trade that thrives on poverty, corruption, and greed, and creates global insecurity. The fight to save elephants is far from over, and it's not a battle we can afford to lose. <laughs> Should have been vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Discovering elephants. Discovering elephants and discovering the elephant crisis fund and launching the Not On My Planet campaign has been not only a life-changing experience, but has changed the way I look at myself. This mission has opened my eyes to the fact that me, a woman who grew up in the countryside of Holland in a tiny village can truly make a difference. And knowing that I'm using the opportunities given to me by the fashion industry to shine a light on saving the elephants is overwhelming. It's a feeling of having a purpose that has allowed me to connect the people that I've met from all over the years in the fashion industry to join me in this incredible cause. What's next for Not On My Planet? We recently launched our second campaign that was hugely successful and are currently planning next year's. In the meantime, we are actively meeting with other brand partners for next year's campaign, with our goal being to create a fashion industry coalition to support the Elephant Crisis Fund. As I said in the beginning, I am so honored to be here with all of you. And I can't wait to hear all of your stories. And I'm sure you'll do a much better job than I just did. <laughs> but it's truly amazing to be here. And thank you so much for listening.